Okay, so what I want to do right now is just do a quick live coding session for parts of the first project of Nana Tetris. And the reason I want to do this is to show off some of the quirks of the HDL language and specify some of what you're going to see, like array notations and range of notations, stuff like that that just might not be exactly intuitive right off the bat. And then just some of how things are defined in general. So I kind of want to do a little bit of an explanation on that and just kind of showcase how to do a few things, how to approach them. Another thing I want to do is to show that there are two different ways of actually approaching using the Nanotetra software. One is through their GUI, and another one is through the command line. Now, typically, I would say the GUI is gonna be the best way to do it if you're not familiar with the command line. However, um, the GUI software is not exactly the most robust piece of software ever. It has a lot of, uh, less than stellar features. Um, for some Windows users, you're gonna experience this quite strongly. And the fact that you cannot resize the size of the application and the output of the application to tell you if you successfully ran software or not is at the very bottom. So a lot of the times it'll either be A, under the taskbar to change the taskbar settings, or B, completely off the screen so to change your scaling settings. So a lot of people are gonna have, say, a 1080p screen, uh, that has 150% scaling, you'll need to dial that back. Um, it's just going to be kind of independent, independent to your device on what you need to do to get it to work. Now, the command line gets rid of all of that because it just runs in your command line. So if you can see the command line, you can see the output. There are a few niceties in the GUI that won't be in the command line, but I don't think it's going to be anything really truly worth caring about too much I'll show off both ways in this video regardless and then going forward I'm gonna do it like once or twice maybe and then going forward I'm just gonna do command line because it is way easier it's way quicker and it's more consistent the GUI will also crash pretty often in later chapters and sometimes it'll just crash at random but it's just an older piece of Java software, so it hasn't exactly aged gracefully, but without further ado, let's just go ahead and swap over the slides and just take a look. So, what I have here is my basic elementary NOT gate. So we have a single NAND gate. The inputs are tied off right here. So we have N and N being passed in to this NAND gate, and we have an OUT. Now, the way that Nanotetris treats this NAND gate. You can assume, assume that this is input A, this is input B, and this is output of out. So what we're saying is that A is going to be equal to N, B is also going to be equal to N, and our out will be equal to out. So we're going to take a look over at uh, Nanotetris real quick. Uh, then you can see right above me I have projects and tools. The tools directory holds all of the applications. Let me over here. So we really only care about the CPU emulator and the hardware simulator for this course. For the HCL stuff, we only care about this hardware simulator. That's what we're using for the first few projects. So that's what you're gonna see me using here. I'm not gonna do anything here. Just miss quick, my bad. Don't touch anything in these folders. Please do not do it. I beg you. Uh, it will break. You've been warned. And for projects, we're gonna have eight projects. A lot of these are original to Nano Tetris. Some, the later ones, so seven and eight specifically, do not use Nano Tetris almost at all. And then four is one that I created from scratch as a more gentle introduction to assembly language because chapter five, their introduction to assembly language is a little bit steep. So I wanted to introduce something that has a bit more of a, a gradual learning curve as opposed to just do the thing. Cause that's just a little bit uh so that much but we're on project one right now so we have a lot of files to work with you're gonna notice a bunch of these out files you're not gonna see those unless you started running things so bear with me on that i'll explain the different files uh throughout the video as well but what we want to do is come down here to this not.hdl click that and then take a look at this code so up here we just have some some light, not really licensing, but just uh, who made it, where it came from, 
comments or single line comments like C and C++ just uh, slash slash and then here we can have a breakdown of the gate which is not gate out equals not in so it's about it pretty pretty elementary and it's a comment block so slash star star slash very akin to C and C++ and then we get the actual code the actual important parts so what we have here is the chip and then the name so chip not indicates what chip we're working with or the input parts of just in in this case and the output parts of just out and then the actual parts code this is going to be where you actually write code so this is where we're actually lining the logic and saying what's going to be happening now if we take a look quick at this we have a goes in b goes in out get out for a single NAND gate the slides and what you put in the projects for the most part of project one are going to be one to one so we're going to do a single NAND gate now before I actually start typing if you notice that you don't have syntax highlighting so all this green comments uh, like blue and purple parts it's just all white text or if you're on a light theme all black text and you don't have these icons over here then I suggest you come over here find NAND to Tetris by Lewis and just type in NAND to Tetris and you'll see in the second one for Lewis just uh, click down here and install it it's actually really really good and it makes doing this pro these projects so much easier so the normal way if you don't have the actual extension is you would type in all of this and NAND A equals N B equals N out it goes out and then a semicolon. This would be the correct approach to do it if you don't have the actual extension. If you do, then you just do this. There's this little square right here for NAND. Click that. It automatically populates the input and output parts. And then you just need to fill them in with the appropriate parts. So I save that. And this is my not gate. You can see we have NAND. The inputs are the same. So A and B are both equal to N and out it goes out that corresponds perfectly to the schematic therefore it should work now different ways to do this just bear with me on this both are going to use command line a little bit because i'm on linux if you're on windows and you can do exactly what i'm going to do with a minor edit because real quick let me uh, close up the project uh, close out but just minimize it you're going to notice that my tools folder have sh files that is because i'm on a unix system if you're on a windows system you'll see .bat files Unix also includes both includes both Linux and Mac OS. So just be cautious and aware of that. But if you want to run these, and this you can do this on Linux as well. You can tell that I am currently in this NAND the Tetris folder because I opened the terminal here. So what I'm gonna do is do dot slash. I'm gonna type in the right place first. Dot slash. That means current directory. I did dot dot slash that would mean previous directory so some command line things not a big deal but current directory tools I'm going to start typing in hard for hardware simulator I'm going to hit tab and it's going to auto complete that that works on any operating system for any shell pretty much it's just a really shorthand way to get out typing all characters of hardware simulator so this is telling the computer to run this application this binary file well this is a script file but it's telling it to execute that script essentially so basically whatever you pass into the command line first is what you're saying hey I want you to run whatever this is maybe it's an exe file maybe it's a BAT file an SH file just something we're telling it to run this so if I run it just without any command at all any parameter and I just hit enter it's going to launch the software. So if I did dot slash tools slash hardware simulator dot BAT, assuming that you are in the right files, this is very, very specific to where you are in your terminal and all that good stuff, then it's going to launch the GUI software. So what you're going to see here is real quick, let me just pull it over here. There is a right, uh, right here. So I get it. This, uh, it's like blank space right here I'm pointing to this is the output of the entire program and there's a few of the paints 
So if we over here, this input pane, uh, this is going to be the input parts from your code. The output pins pane here is going to be the output parts. We have the chip name up here. And then we have the actual HDL that is going to load in all the code that you've written. And there's going to be this empty pane you see right here, which is going to contain our intermediate pins, which we will touch on later. And we have this green button up at the top left, which is load chip. Then we have this scroll looking thing, which is load script. These are the two most critical parts in terms of running your software outside of this double arrow, which is to run. So these three are the main parts you care about. So first thing we want to do is I'm going to go up a directory into my projects, go to zero one. I'm going to look for not.hdl, which is right here. I'm going to load that in. Uh, you'll see my input pins are in, my output pins are out. Uh, that should check out if I scroll down a little bit. Yep, in and out right here. There are no internal pins or internal pins at all. That's fine because we only have one line right here, which is A goes in, B goes in, out it goes out which shows all the different parts of A, B, both being in and out, out. So there's a lot of different panes. You can actually see it kind of change, analyze it as you go through. Now, I am going to load not.tst because it corresponds with the actual HDL script or the HDL file. You'll see it populate here. This is the actual test script that it's going to run through. I'm going to crank this up to fast just because I'm impatient. And I'm going to hit this double arrow try and run it. You're going to see the yellow line goes through here and we end up with an indescript comparison in it successfully. So that's how we do it with GUI. I'm going to keep it open just for now so I can show you how to do it in a later one. Now, this is a very, very honestly extremely simple example, but if I press, I'm going to press up I'm like Ebor since I just did the dot slash tools harvesting sh it's going to auto populate the terminal with that saying I'm going to run it again but instead of just running it this time I'm going to do dot slash projects zero one and since I just ran I just made not I'm going to look for not dot tst so I want to run my test script against horror simulator it will automatically find the HDL file that I wrote and you'll see that we end up with end of script comparison and it successfully so if I'm executing if I'm like not executing if I'm editing the HDL file I need to run the test script against the harvesting layer so if I was doing say Zor I would edit Zor.hdl accordingly and then I would do the harvesting sh against Zor.tst and then again just your file paths here matter quite a lot so that is what you're going to see me do throughout the majority of this video. But for now, I digress. We're going to go and do and.hdl this time. So I'm just going to kind of minimize this a little bit, get it out of the way. And now you see we have two different input parts of A and B, a single output part, and then just the actual code that will need to be edited here. If I load up and.hdl here, here you notice we have two input pins, A and B, single output pin of out, no internal pins, and no code right now. So let's make that, let's fix that. We can take a quick look over at our schematics from and and see that we have inputs. Again, this will be A, this will be B, and that NAND has outs. And then since we just made an, a not gate, if we look back at not.hdl quick, uh, let me find it, we can see that the input parts are in and out. Right? So with that being said, we know that this is going to be in, this will be out. So now we have input parts of A and B, so we have A equals A, B equals B. Now the thing is, is how do we connect these two parts? Well, let's create an intermediate, or as they call it, an internal pin. I'm going to call it NAND out. So it'll be out equals 
NAND out, and then this will be N equals NAND out. So something like this. Again, I'm so sorry for the really bad handwriting. It'll make more sense once it's uh, written down good. That's why I'm doing a live session and not a uh, more of a lecture session. So without further ado, take one look back at it. Uh, we need a NAND gate populate all that and then connect that to a NOT gate. Okay, so just NAND, we need the square, we know that this will be A, that is going to be B, this is going to be NAND out. Please name the internal pin something to script that you can recognize because once you get to project two, you're going to get to a file that has like 70 plus lines with a lot of internal pins and it will be very very difficult to get things connected properly if you don't know what things are so if you're just naming things out one out two out three so on and so forth you will lose track of that almost guaranteed so just save yourself a headache and be mindful of your naming convention so at this point we create an internal pin here just by specifying that the output is something that doesn't already exist that creates a pin from it. Now, when we do this, we need to make sure that our input parts do exist. And I'll show what you mean, show you what I mean in just a moment. So, if we are going to try to do it through the GUI, let's reload and.hdl. Now you notice that we have a populated internal pin of NAND out. And then you can scroll through and see NAND equals A equals A, B equals B, NAND or out equals NAND out. In is NAND out and out is out for the NOT gate. Now, you might think, oh, let's go to the left and right. Doesn't work. It's It just doesn't work, and I apologize in advance already. I'm gonna do NAND.TST, populate that, should be good to go. I'm gonna run that through. In the script, comparison is successfully, good to go. Now, real quick, I wanna talk about some of the error messages. So in this case, we have NAND and NOT. Now, what happens if I try to use one of these that doesn't exist, so let's just say B equals C, C doesn't exist, what's gonna happen? Well, let's see. Oh, in HDL file, home, Devin documents, com4, com4, Linux, NAND, and Tetris, project 01, and .hdl, line 21, C has no source pin. Now also, if you can't read all of this, because again, if I, if I scroll to the right, it doesn't change the size, you can't see everything and you're running on the GUI, hover over it and you're gonna see that there is kind of like a pop-up menu or pop-up like box down there that shows the actual text. It'll show all the text. So if it's like way too long to be displayed in the GUI itself, just hover over it for a second and it should actually give you the correct information. Now, we can fix that easily by doing something like this. But a more common issue that you might have is let's say you made this NAND out with a capital O. What if you just kind of maybe typo this as NAND out with a lowercase o? Is it going to do the same thing? Let's check it out. And just like that, we have NAND out has no source pin. That is because this does not exist. Even though it is showing it doesn't, it does exist out here. That's just uh. It's, it's doing case insensitive highlighting. But the actual code itself is case sensitive. So make sure those line up. And then another thing is if we don't settle this output here, and let's just say we make this out with an extra T. Let's type it real quick. What's gonna happen? Uh, let's do and at HDL. Well, it loaded. It didn't throw an error, but real quick, let's take a look at the internal pins. This exists, this out TT, or this out T, whatever, it exists as an internal pin. There is this output pin, we already know that, the output pin always exists. But if this exists, that means that there's nothing tied here. So let's check out what happens if we try and run it. And we get a comparison failure at line five, and let's see what that means. At this point, I'm gonna close up the GUI, so goodbye to it. But, just real quick, 
actually, you know what? I'll go ahead and run it again to show you what I mean. Uh, let's change this not.tst to and.tst. Oh. Uh, there it is, comparison failure at line five. Okay, so this is where the other files come into play. I close out of my terminal. Now, let's take a look at this TST. because We've been using it quite a lot, go away a little notification. This is essentially just a script saying what we're doing. So we're sending A is input to zero, B to zero, doing an evaluation and spitting that to the output. So zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So essentially we're combinating every single possible input and essentially making a truth table. And you can tell that here because you'll see CMP files and this is what they contain. A truth table. That's about it. Now I'm going to drag this over to the top right. And these dot out files are what you're making. So what are they? A truth table. So the goal is to get your dot out file that you generate from running the software to be identical to the CMP that already exists. So please do not edit the CMP or the TST or things will break. Now, real quick, let's uh, change this back fix it <clears throat> and then run it same thing and just watch my dot out file here as I run this and just like that you see in the script comparison is successfully and the whole thing is this one bit changed here because of the proper logic so if you ever see comparison failure at line whatever that is not an issue in the HDL file it's just not. It is a comparison failure issue in the CMP and specifically the dot out file, which just means there is a logical error in your code and you need to just go back and look through it and figure out what went wrong. Okay, so without further ado, everything I'm going to do now is in terminal. So I digress. If I press up, it's going to cycle through my history. So it's going to see me just have this auto populate all the time. I'm just pressing up. That is it. Excuse me. Now, moving on from there, I'm not going to do and. We already did and. We're going to do or. If you look at it, we're going to have two internal pins, just because these two connect to gates. Uh, this is going to be A. This is going to be B. Uh, let's just do uh, not nat. Not A not B and then out so we should need three gates to, there's gonna be three lines of code two knots and an and we need to do the knots first so let's take a look over at or.hdl okay here we are so now we need two knots uh, this needs to be A this needs to be not a uh, get the square B not B I think it's an and at the end and a not a so we're connecting internal pins here not B and then out it goes out so if we take a look back over at our code or schematic we said not for a input creates not a connects to NAND the first input and the same thing for B, but for the second input. And then finally out equals out. So if we run this, I'm just going to click here, change this to or.tst, and the script comparison and it successfully. So these three are very, very basic elementary gates, but this should hopefully clarify all the different unique quirks between the command line interface versus the GUI interface, and then a little bit of how to diagnose the error messages that you might see. So I do want to move on to another gate. I can't recall if I'm doing a mux gate or not. I don't think I'm doing the mux gate, but let me check. Because some of these are already written. Um, so you know what? I'm just going to open the mux gate. It's not a big deal. It's already written. You can see a not, an and, an and, an or. Not a big deal. Not and, and, or. Just one to one, so I know I didn't do DMUX. So that is that. 
and you pull up the multi bed, multi way gate. So, this is where things get a little bit more convoluted. So, let's take a look at the multi bit gates. We're going to do two of them. We're going to do the first one and, like you see here, so you have A16 anded with B16. So, we're doing a 16 bit and. You're know, also going to do the muck 16 just because it's a little bit different just a little bit but this be schematic it's not super script but you can see these slash 16s mean 16 bit inputs 16 bit output for our 16 bit gate so let's take a look real quick over at and 16.hdl now <clears throat> essentially what's happening is we're just doing 16 AND gates on each of these individual bits in this kind of like 16 bit sequence or 16 bit array, whatever you want to call it. So it is as dead simple as doing AND 16 AND gates, not 16 AND 16 gates. So be careful of that. That, this, and then finally this. <clears throat> I want to do that 16 times. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. In order to shorthand this just a little bit, I want to open up a piece of spreadsheet software. I'm going to do something real quick. I want to first zoom in to kind of illustrate this a little bit better. And I'm going to do it over here, <coughs> just so it's not right behind me on the camera. So a 0 and a 1 creates a pattern of iteration. I'm going to drag this down 16. Ooh, I don't want 16. I want 15. OK, so 0 through 15 in this kind of array notation here. I'm going to hit Control-C to copy it. I'm going to exit out of it now. I don't need to save. But since this is in a similar pattern with these arrays, we can simply copy paste it in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this A equals A bracket. And you can see it has all these other ones highlighted as well. Well, if I start hitting Control and D, and this is specifically in Visual Studio Code, you'll see it start highlighting everything of a similar style. So now I have 16 cursors on the screen at the same time. So if I move around, you can start editing all these lines at the same time. So what I want to do is delete all of these zeros and then hit control V and it automatically populates zero through 15 right there. Now if I hit control and start using my arrow keys, I'm going to start moving around to the next character, a special character and whatnot, and skipping through a bunch of things, but it keeps it uniform and consistent. So now if I skip over here, I'm all of a sudden at the end of all these zeros, I hit backspace, get rid of all of them, paste them in, same thing. If I hit end on my keyboard, if you have it, it takes me to the end of the line. I just go back casually until I do this. So now, it's auto populated all of these. Not a big deal. So if I try to run that by doing and16.tst, then our end of script is successful. And you're going to do the exact same thing for or.16 and similar for not.16, except we're going to change a and b to n because it's unary. But what I want to do real quick is I want to copy paste all of this and head on over to muck16.hdl. I am going to just casually paste it in there. I am going to then real quick highlight all the ands with a parentheses. And I do that for a specific reason. If I highlight just the ands, you'll see that it highlights all these ands up here in the comments. And we don't want those highlighted right now. We just want everything down here. And what we're going to do, is, well, I'm going to do specifically, is hit Control, Shift, and then L. And it's going to highlight everything in the file, just like that. And then I'm going to hit left on the arrow key, 
that puts me at the beginning of these ands all on every single line. I'm going to hit control, shift, and then the right arrow, and it's going to go to the end of that word, and now we have them all highlighted. So what I'm going to do is then just type in mux. And all of a sudden, I now have a bunch of muxes. But I'm missing something. Muxes all have select pins. We just have A, B, and out. You can tell here we have 16 bit A, which we have accounted for, A is 0 through 15, same thing for B and same thing for out. But we have a single cell, it doesn't have the array notation, it's just by itself. And that's because it's the same bit through all 16 of these gates. So there's no array notation for it, you're just gonna have cell equal cell in every single one of them. So I'm gonna highlight all of these out equals out by control shift L hit left on my arrow key, type in cell equals cell, comma, space, and now every single one of them has an appropriate select pin. You don't have to use all these shortcuts and all this. This is just the way that I do it because it makes things a lot easier, a lot quicker, and a lot more consistent as opposed to me doing, you know, 48 of these because of 0 through 15, 0 through 15, 0 through 15, and then another 16 cell cells. So it's just it's just shorthand stuff. And it's just something that I've learned through trial and error of using IDEs and text editors over the years. So it's just another development tool and it's just something to eventually practice and get used to. Definitely not something I expect you guys know already how to use or you might not already use because it's just making an assumption the people know what you know, which is uh, asinine. But I digress. Here, we're going to do this month 16 at TST, and the script is successful. Now, <clears throat> from there, we're done with the multi bit gates. I moved to multi way gates. Specifically, we're going to do an OR 8 way, and then a MUX 4 way, and a MUX 8 way, because they attempt to do different things. So the OR8 way is taking a single 8-bit input, right, right here, kind of. It's taking in 8 bits. It is taking an 8-bit sequence in, and it's splitting them up. It's splitting them up into individual bits to be passed into OR gates. So what we want to do is look for OR8way.hdl. I don't have to use one even more. And this one is one of the more convoluted ones because it's just kind of a lot. There's seven OR gates here and it's kind of a staggered pattern. We can break it up into pairs by knowing that we have N0 through N7. So this would be N0 going through N7. So 0 and 1, 2 and 3. 4 and 5, and then 6 and 7, so on and so forth. And we have internal pins all here and here, all four of these, and then two of these. Excuse me. So what I want to do, very quickly, <clears throat> is just start this process, because there is a good bit of it. I know I have seven OR gates, so I'm going to split it up to four here, space, two there, and then my last one. So this is all seven, one column of four, a column of two, a column of one just like this schematic. So I know that all of these are going to be in something. So I'm gonna do real quick is shorthand this by doing this right quick, hit delete, and then brackets. So now I have this set up and I just need to do zero, that's gonna be two, it's gonna be four, six. I want this to be uh, one, three, five, and seven. So zero and one are paired together, two and three, four and five, six and seven. So that keeps all my pairs consistent. And then what I wanna do very, very quickly is just do out, um, well, let's just do, let's do this, or one, two, well, 
mm, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so then we want to do or zero, one with four, two, three, giving us or zero, one, two, three. This is not the most robust thing in the world, but it should work and it should illustrate at least what I'm doing. Six, seven, giving us the or of four, five, six, seven. And then we're just going to or zero, one, two, three, four, four five, six, seven. And no, we are not gonna do zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. We're just gonna do out goes out because it sells the final output pin. And we're going to run real quick uh, or eight way TST. And in a script, comparison in it successfully. So that's how we do this. And this is one of the more convoluted ones to do in terms of breaking up an eight bit sequence into individual bits, uh, having multiple staggered internal pins. So we have like one, two, three, four, five, six internal pins that we made here. So it's just a good bit going on. So Moving on from there, we will do the mux four way 16, which is just taking two mux 16s. Also, on that note, we must make the mux 16 before we can do mux four way 16s. And that stands true for every single gate that we work with. So in order for us to do this gate, we need mux 16s. Let me just write it down here, so mux 16 is required for this one, which means that mux is required for this one. Which means that say ands and nots are required for these. So we have to have make the not, then make the and, then go ahead and make mux, and eventually make mux 16, and then eventually make mux 4 way 16, and then we could finally do mux 8 way 16. So it's a lot of building blocks, stepping stone progress here. So do be careful of that. If you have an error in your MUX 16, then the MUX 4-way 16 won't work. And that stands true if you have an error here and you're trying to run the code of MUX 4-way 16, this is not gonna work because the AND doesn't work, which means the MUX won't work, which means the MUX 16 won't work, which means that your MUX 4-way 16 also will not work. So do be cautious of that. Now for this, this isn't too bad. We'll just cut it up, it's gonna be uh, we're in MUX 16 with A, B, and cell zero. A MUX 16 with C, D, and cell 0, and then another MUX 16 with internal pins and cell 1. So let's go ahead and hop on over there and just do that. So, I said MUX 16 with A, B, cell 0, and we'll just do MUX 1. And then a MUX 16 of C. D cell zero because we share a select pin. Mux two. And then finally we want a mux sixteen of mux one, mux two, cell one, and then output of out. So if we run that, whoops. 4way16.tst in a script comparison is successfully but I want to go ahead and show that the relationship between those and this mux 8way16 are pretty much identical except there's going to be a new notation here with this this kind of 0 dot dot 1 over here that's more of a range so it's going to be 0 and 1 but if we had say 0 dot dot 8 or more specifically 0 dot dot 7 that would be the first 8 bits of that sequence so 0 through 7 and you can have 8 through 15 and break it up to be the latter half of that so that dot dot notation is basically in range of so 0 through 1 0 through 7 4 through 5 whatever you want it to be but one thing to note it was always be something like a less than value dot dot greater than value so that's something to keep in mind for the dmux 8 way that comes at the later end of project one. It would not be something like one dot dot zero, so keep that in mind. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at our 
Mux 8-way 16, which is right over here. So we start with two Mux 4-way 16s. So A, B, C, D, cell 0 dot dot 1. And let's do Mux 1 again. Same exact same thing here, mostly. Uh, oops, I did not do that right. So I need to come back here, do this, and we need uh, D, uh, yeah, E, F, G, H, cell zero dot dot one, mux two, and then finally we mux sixteen these together. Not mux four way sixteen. We just want mux sixteen for Mux 1, Mux 2, Cell 2, and then out it goes out. Once we do that, and script compares it in successfully, and that is the highest tier of Muxes that we can go. So, that is a pretty long standing process going from not. We'll go from NAND to NOT to AND to eventually MUX, from MUX to MUX 16, and then go to MUX 4-way 16, and eventually finally culminating in MUX 8-way 16. But there's a lot of nuances and a lot of just different aspects of the HDL language to go through. So I hope that this did a good job in explaining that and displaying what exactly is happening and just kind of how we go about really working through this hardware description language the software stack. You can use a GUI if you want to. You can elect to use command line if you want to. I am fine with either option and I'm more than happy to help you learn either option if you want. So, hope you guys learned something. Hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one.